Hey there, I'm Juliana. I'm a PhD student here at the Media Lab, and today uh, my partner Athagra and I have prepared a video for you showing some of the techniques that we have been learning in our microfabrication course. I'm sitting behind our new microfabrication facility here at the Media Lab, and as you can imagine, when this facility was being built a couple of years ago, we were all very intrigued by the mysterious tools that were being installed and by the yellow light that was suddenly illuminating the end of the hallway. And the joy of taking uh, this class has been the process of gradually unraveling the mystery about the purpose of these tools. And we hope that uh, in, in creating this video for you, we can help share some of the uh, fun of discovering how these tools actually function. In the fridge, we can find PI and PMMA, which are the two chemicals that we are going to be spin coating onto our wafer today. So here they are, and here is our spin coater. The first step is to place the chuck in the spin coater. They come in various sizes based on the size of the wafer that you will be spin coating onto. And the key is to align the notches at the bottom of the chuck with the notch in the spin coater. Then press firmly to secure it. Now take your wafer and make sure it is clean using a nitrogen gun to remove any dust. Now you are ready to place your wafer onto the spin coater chuck. Turn the vacuum on to secure it. Now we have to program the spin coater. We have to program the ramp up the speed, and the ramp down. So three different parameters that govern the spin coater's behavior. Now we're ready to spin coat PMMA onto our wafer substrate. We take some PMMA, we apply it to the center of the wafer, making sure that the wafer is mostly coated in the viscous material, and we close the spin coater. We turn on the spin coater and it will begin to spin very slowly, wetting the surface of the silicon. It will then speed up and apply an even distributed layer while the vacuum holds it in place. We release the vacuum, open the spin coater, carefully pick up our wafer from the corner using tweezers, and place the PMMA coated wafer on a hot plate to cure. Once the PMMA has cured, we begin the process of spin coating the PI handling layer. The PI will be dissolved in acetone once all the remaining fabrication steps are complete. The PI is even more viscous than the PMMA, so it is important to be attentive when applying it to the silicon because we want to minimize any bubbles that form during the application. In case a bubble does form, you can use a small pipette to carefully remove it, and this is particularly important for the PI layer because any layer on top will be ruined if bubbles are present. We spin just as before, it's not shown here, and once it's done we release the wafer, examine it, you should see a very clean surface, and note that after the PMMA is applied, if there are any problems, you must unfortunately trash your sample. Conversely, after the PI layer, if there are any issues, it's still possible to wash away the PI with acetone. Then go ahead and cure the PI layer as well at high temperature. This one takes a few hours. The last step, as always, is cleanup. In the second part of this video, we will learn about three steps. First, spin coating the PR, that is the photoresist. Second, aligning the wafer and exposing the PR in a mask aligner. And third, developing the PR in a developer solution. 
To ensure the wafer is free of dust particles, we air blow the wafer with a nitrogen gun. We place the jug with our sample on the top in the spin coater. After proper alignment of the wafer, we switch on the vacuum in order to securely hold the chuck in place. Then we add a small amount of viscous PR on the center of the wafer and spin the wafer at a preset RPM. The PR is then baked on a preheated hot plate for 3 minutes. Next step is mask alignment. The mask is made up of glass and has two sides. The side with chromium should face the sample and can be seen on the edges of the mask. The wafer is loaded onto the sample stage and held securely onto a vacuum chuck. In this step, we want to make sure that our target pattern is projected exactly on top of the sample with the help of the alignment marks. This is achieved by careful positioning of the sample in the XY plane with control knobs. This is followed by a wedge error correction which involves moving the sample to left and right sequentially. After this we are ready to expose the sample with UV light and the lever is pulled down. The sample is developed in a developer solution. Traces of the pattern begin to appear soon after dipping the sample in the developer solution. Wow. The developing process is quenched by dipping the wafer in water. Finally, it is blown dry with nitrogen gas. Next step is wet etching of chrome and gold layers. Since this process involves use of toxic chemicals such as hydrochloric and nitric acids, it is strictly carried out with proper PPE as shown in this video. This is the last step of the process. The PR mask is washed away with sequential washings with acetone, IPA and water and finally blown dry with nitrogen. 